Hello everybody, this is the first week of AC Circuits Laboratory and what we're going to do in this week is basically we're going to investigate RC and RS circuits. I know actually the uh, this is actually not the type of topic we are going to investigate since we're talking about AC circuits. But for the first week actually we are doing something out of the book. We are going in for AC, uh, RL and RC circuits in DC supplies. So first of all, as you probably have it, we have this laboratory manual. And according to that, we have the first experiment. We have the first circuit in which we have five volts of voltage source. Other than that, we have 20, uh, 22 kilo ohms, a resistor. Then we have a capacitor. So basically we are asked to connect the circuit in figure one. And how are we gonna do that? So since we have the resistor and capacitor in series, let's get it started with the resistor. Let me get a 22 kilo ohms resistor which is actually red, red, orange, as you can see the color code. Let me get it closer to you. I don't know if you can see, but I can. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug that into my breadboard. And after that, we have a capacitor, which is 1000 microfarads. So here I have my capacitor and I'm also going to connect that one. Or this one is also a 1000 microfarad capacitor. I mean, the type of the capacitor does not matter. The only thing I ask for is it's I mean, it is supposed to have a value of 1000 microfarads. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this capacitor in series with the resistor I have. And as you can see, we have two legs. One of them is actually longer than the other, meaning that the long leg is our positive side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the long leg in series with the resistor I have right here. So that now I have built it the circuit in figure. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a voltage source. But when you check out the circuit, as you can see, when T is equal to zero, actually we have a switch. And according to that switch, our switch is supposed to be closed after T is equal to zero, meaning that initially our capacitor has no voltage. So that's important actually. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a five voltage uh, supply to, to my circuit by using my voltage source right in here. In order to do that actually, I'm going to need two cables, all right? So the black one goes into black, as you can imagine, that's easy, and the red one goes into red. So this is the first connection we have. Other than that, in order for simplicity in my circuit, I will use my jumper cables. To do that, I'm gonna get two jumper cables. One is white and the other one is red. And by using these two jumper cables, I'm going to complete my circuit. But before anything else, as you can see, after you have the circuit, we have actually some requests from you. The first one is what will be the voltage across the capacitor at time constant. First, we want you to calculate then that value and then we want you to measure that value. So the calculation part is easy and I'm going to show you how it is done, but the measuring part is the part that we are interested in. So how are we gonna measure that value? First of all, let me show you the calculation. So here actually we have a pretty basic circuit, right? I probably think you can see this. Here we have, let me say, one, that actually uh, representing our first circuit. Here we have five volts of voltage source. Other than that, we have this resistor in here and also we have this capacitor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna investigate the circuit in two time intervals. The first one is when T is less than zero. The other one is when T is greater than zero. So before anything else, Let's investigate our circuit when T is less than zero. In that case, actually, you can easily see we have a switch right over here. And we know that when T is equal to zero, this switch will be closed, meaning that when T is less than zero, here we have a disconnection. So the circuit we have is something like this, all right? So actually, that means the capacitor voltage when T is less than zero is gonna be equal to zero volts. Then uh, we are also going to investigate our circuit when T is greater than zero. And in that case, the switch right here will be closed. So we will have this voltage source. So this is what we're going to have. And what we also know is the fact that when we are in steady state, meaning that when we are at T is equal, T is greater than zero, and when a long amount of time has passed, meaning that we are at steady state, this capacitor will be replaced by an open circuit. I mean, instead of this capacitor, we are just gonna have an open circuit. So that circuit will look something like this.
So what we know is here we have plus minus VC, here we have 22 kilo ohms, and here we have 5 volts. That simply means that our final voltage value VC of infinity is going to be equal to 5 volts for our capacitor. Other than that, we need to calculate the time constant. And we know that for an RC circuit, that is equal to R times C, and our resistor value is 22 times 10 to 3. Other than that, we have our capacitance value, which is 1000 times 10 to minus 6. So in the end, what we're going to have is 22 seconds. That's the time constant we have. And if you want to get an equation for our capacitance voltage, capacitor voltage value, that is actually going to be Vc of infinity, all right, plus Vc of zero minus Vc of infinity, oops, times E2 minus T over time constant. So when we replace the values, what we're going to have is Vc of infinity is five plus here we are going to have 0 minus 5, that's going to be minus 5 times e to minus t over 22. So basically we have 5 minus 5 times e to minus t over 22. Of course that is in volts. And as you can see, uh, let me scroll, scroll my page down a little. Uh, the first question is what will be the voltage value across the capacitor at time constant? We know that our time constant is equal to 22 seconds, meaning that Vc of t is equal to 22 seconds is going to be that voltage value. So 5 minus 5 times e to minus 1, and that is actually going to give us, let me calculate this part by using my calculator. So when I have 1 over e, that is, oops, sorry, 1 over e, that's going to be 0 0.36, and when I multiply it by 5, and my, uh, I mean, subtract that value from 5, you're going to have 3.16, 3.16 volts. That's the value we're going to have. That's the first calculation part. And we are also going to measure that value. So I'm just going to draw a line in here and let me just say measurement in here. Other than that, in part C, what we have is we are actually asked to calculate the voltage across the capacitor after 60 seconds. So Vc of t is equal to 60. In that case, we're going to have 5 minus 5 times E2. Instead of 1 this time, we will have 60 over 22. That's going to be minus 2.72. And this is what we're going to calculate. And we, when we do the proper calculations in here, we're going to get 4.673 volts. And we are also going to measure that one. So let's get it started. So in the first part, what we're going to do is basically now our capacitor has no charge at all and it has no voltage at all. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to connect that to a voltage source and observe how it is loading. That's the logic we have. So now I'm going to get one of my cables right in here and also I'm going to plug another one at the end so that I will be able to actually supply the voltage. Now what I'm going to do is, let me turn on my multimeter again, I will actually set the voltage value to 5 volts here. I can make a little bit of an arrangement, 5.03, a little bit more, yes. Now we have exactly 5 volts and what we are going to do is pretty basic and we are actually asked to observe the time at the same time because we want actually 22 seconds to pass and exactly at that time we are going to calculate the capacitor, uh, capacitor voltage value. Now what I'm going to do is actually I am supposed to uh, plug this, connect this multimeter across my capacitor. You know what? Because I am actually trying to calculate, not calculate, but measure the voltage across the capacitor. So I'm going to get two more cables. And this is how it is done. I mean, the black one goes to COM and the red one, oops, they are actually entangled a little. Let me fix that. This one goes to here, and as you can see, I'm in the DC voltage mode, and I'm gonna connect my probes across my capacitor so that I can measure the voltage across the capacitor. All right, this is what we have. But as you can see, now we have a problem. And what is that problem? Our capacitor is already charged. So actually, we can replace this capacitor by another one so that we will get an uncharged capacitor. So here I have another one, and let me check if it is charged or not. And also there is another way of uncharging your capacitor all of a sudden, which is that you can simply touch the legs of the capacitor to each other. So in that case, you will have a zero volts value, let me show you. 
as you can see right now, we are actually, we have discharged our capacitor successfully and in the meantime, that is, I mean, a lot uh, shorter than it is supposed to be. But what I prefer is a fully discharged capacitor. So I'm going to go with another one. And as you can see now, when I check out, again, I have a, just like a small, a small bit of a voltage. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my capacitor right in here. So I will also connect my probes. Now notice that our circuit is not connected to our voltage source because here we have the probes of the voltage source as you can see and they're empty. But what we're going to do is basically we are actually going to set a chronometer then uh, we will start the time at t is equal to 72 seconds. Actually, we're going to get the value, but do not worry because I will pause the video in the editing part so that you will be able to see which value it is. And then we will actually stop the video one more time again, then t is equal to 60 seconds. So let's start doing that. So I am actually going to connect red probe with my red jumper cable and the black one with my white cable. And now what is happening is basically our capacitor is being charged. That's the logic. And as you can see, it is actually a little slow. And you know why? Because it takes 22 seconds for a time constant. It is actually a long time constant. So we're going to wait. And by the way, let me tell you this. When five time constant passes, then our capacitor gets fully charged. That's the logic. And five time constants in our uh, particular circuit is gonna be about a minute. So it, it is of course gonna take some time, but you just gotta be, uh, you know, patient. So we're gonna wait for this. I will just speed up the video. A few moments later. Now guys, we have been waiting for a while and as you can see, we are almost at five volts, which was actually the expected value. So this was the first part of the experiment. And actually, uh, I will talk about the results after, I, uh, after I'll check the video. You know why? Because I am also in interested in those values because I didn't have a chronometer with me. So I will also check out from the video if our values from the measurement and also calculation hold. But I'm pretty sure they are holding because we set up the experiment so fine and well and also our calculations are correct. So see you in the second part of the experiment.